Sometimes you just have to put on your angry eyes and do the most. Hey y'all, hi. Today I am filming another check-in about my progress during No Buy July. So I'm not buying anything in the month, month of July. And I know a number of you are joining me for that, which has been really great. This is the second check-in and the third video that's just me talking about No Buy July this month. The first one is the introduction to the project of No Buy July. I'm not going to tell you like all the details details of my no buy and its rules and stuff because they're all in that video and I think a lot of you have already seen it. So I'll link that in case you want to watch that first. I'll link my first check-in which is like towards the end of the first week of no buy July in case you want to watch that first. And this is just like kind of the rest of it. I might do a reflection when we get into the beginning of August. Maybe a video about all the things I wanted to buy during the month and didn't buy. But we're close enough to the end of the month as I sit here filming this that I feel like I can reflect on where the month got me, the difference between how I was when I started the month and how I ended the month. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm Hannah and I love beautiful things and I have this beauty channel and talking about the ways in which the beautiful things that I love to own, like makeup, clothing, accessories, beauty products, the ways in which they add value to life. That's part of what I do with my job, but I also try to remember remember for myself and try to remember to talk about the fact that things, beautiful things, don't actually change a person's life. I think that sometimes, especially when the going gets tough with mental health, we can slip into the delusion that we can shop our way out of unhappiness. I was kind of starting to go down that path in June. I was spending way too much time browsing because I wasn't feeling great and I was trying to distract myself from that. But the result of that was about to be me buying way too much stuff and spending way too much money. So that's why I did No by July. And I try to always remember those principles on my channel, even as I review makeup, talk about beauty, etc. So if you think that you would like to continue to hang out with me from time to time and watch conscientious, balanced beauty content, then make sure that you subscribe before you go. And now let's get into the meat of the video. I feel like my check-in about no by July here as we near the end of the month can basically be boiled down into one sentence, which is that the first week was hard and then the second week, the trance suddenly broke. So ever since pretty much the beginning of the second week of No By July, like right after I filmed my my first check-in of the month about this project. Since then, not only have I been spending way, way less time browsing online and like even thinking about stuff that one might buy or things that I might in the future buy, but since then the concept of buying new stuff, like the idea of new stuff as something that allures me and keeps me going has just been totally deflated. It's like before No by July, especially through June, as I was feeling, I think, inside of myself a little bit emotionally desperate for something good, like something good, like anything good, the idea of buying something new was like growing and growing and growing and becoming this ever-present thing, this like huge juicy thing that had become like, like a kind of music that was always playing, like a call. Something that, this huge juicy thing that was always calling me. The idea of new things obviously is still there. I mean, I still go on Instagram, not as much actually as I was doing in June, but I still check in on Instagram once or twice a day. I still see ads. Once in a while, I'll see an ad for something that seems appealing. So yeah, it's not as though the idea of a new thing or the part of me that sometimes tries to make decisions about whether or not I should buy something has been completely completely removed from my brain. The idea still exists. It's still there. It's just not overinflated anymore. And it doesn't feel like unearthly juicy. Like it, it doesn't feel unrealistically alluring and like it's calling to me all the time. So if I think about, if I happen to think for some reason about a new lipstick, the idea of a new lipstick, it's just a new lipstick. It's just lipstick. New sneakers, if I were to get them, if I decide to get them in August, they'll just be sneakers, shoes, things that I put onto my 
my feet. Maybe they look cool. I walk around in them. That's it. They no longer have this mythic allure and charge attached to them like they did all the way, like for much of June and all the way up through the first week of No by July. New sneakers or whatever the thing is, it's no longer the vehicle into which I'm pouring my need for something to fix or help alleviate what it is that's hard about life right now. A couple of weeks of a strict no buy just popped that bubble that had formed for a variety of reasons. And the thing is, it's not that I'm all that much happier. I am still struggling with what's going on in the world. And there are still repercussions of that in my daily life. I think that a lot of us are feeling that way. I mean, it's not like being on a no-buy fixed the fact that I was feeling bad and the fact that it's been a dark time. And I have to confess, for a lot of this month, I have still been engaged in rapacious escapism. Uh, I And I actually think sometimes it's been to the detriment of my work and maybe even to some of my relationships. But the thing is, I found something other than shopping to use for that. And for the most part, for me, it's been reading. So I started rereading a series of books that I've loved since I was, I think, a teenager. It's the Beekeeper's Apprentice series by Laurie R. King. I'll link it down below. The Beekeeper's Apprentice is the first book and And then I think she's written 17 books of the series since then. I've read them through a number of times, but I think that the last time I read them through, there were only like 10 or something. So I'm on, I think I'm on the seventh book right now. I've read like eight books in the month of July. But, you know, we love to see it. I think that once I get past the 10th or 11th book, I'm going to start reading ones that I haven't read yet, is what I'm trying to say, because I'm not up to date on the series. So that's really exciting, something to look forward to. And I've also, I I rewatched Heartstopper. I haven't been watching all that much television because I usually watch shows in the bathtub, and I have a Kindle that's waterproof, so I've actually been reading in the bathtub. But I've watched a couple of things with Joe, we watched Dune. I hadn't seen it. Oh, I watched the new season of The Umbrella Academy. If you've been following me for a long time, you might remember when I discovered it and watched the first two seasons. So I did. I watched that in the bath. But the escapism that I've been engaging in the most heavily is reading. I've been reading these wonderful books, and I've sometimes been reading them for too many hours every day. I have been ignoring Joe sometimes to read the books. I have been sometimes taking too long lunch breaks to read just an extra chapter or two. Some nights, if I was trying to go to sleep and I was getting towards the end of a book and it was getting exciting, I would stay up like way, way too late just finishing the book. I've just been like running away from my feelings into these books, running away from my thoughts and the work of processing what's going on right now into these books. And in that way, in the way of it being escapism, it hasn't been measurably better. There are some ways in which it's been measurably better than shopping as an escapist choice. And I'll get to that in a second. But in terms of like the way I spend my time, the way in which shopping can sometimes cause me to retreat, retreat from my husband, retreat from my work, this kind of escapism has been the same. (laughs) I've been retreating in the same way. But a couple of things are true. The first thing is the, the main thing I was going to say about this. My bank account is intact. This alone would make reading a better choice. And I already happen to own the first like 10 or 11 books in this series, but you can get books for free at the library. So you can escape your thoughts and your troubles into books without it having any effect on your bank account. And that's what I've been doing. So even if like just as escapism, they're both equally bad because they're both equally kind of numbing, even if that were true, and actually I'm going to talk in a second about whether or not that's true. Even if it were true, one form of escapism, which is the shopping, causes me to spend spend a bunch of money and buy a bunch of stuff that I probably don't need and the other one doesn't. And so it's just empirically way, way better and has been empirically way, way better. But I don't think that they're equally bad. And here's why. Good books, even novels, I was going to say even light fiction, although I think that there's an argument that these books that I'm really into, I mean, they are easy to read. They are fiction, but they do have a kind of gravity to them, even though some people might not consider them to be literature. But 
really good books of almost every kind are infused with humanity and nuance and give the reader tools to develop her relationship with herself. It's like, even though on the surface, I'm just being suckled by the milk of fiction, I'm also consuming a bunch of vitamins with that milk so to speak. Literature heals, even light fiction. Characters and emotions and storytelling and history and language, you know, the creative use of language, those things all connect us to each other and develop the heart. And shopping for new stuff, on the other hand, I mean quite on the other hand, shopping for new stuff often makes me feel like I'm doing the opposite of that. It makes me feel like I'm grasping for connection, love, identity, like I'm grabbing for those things and then it just like turns to dust in my hands. So I would say even as escapism, reading is like calling me back to myself, you know? And I don't think that so far this month I have necessarily been taking the best advantage of that. I haven't really been making myself try to figure out everything about that right now because it's been a hard month, y'all. But I know that it's leading me somewhere instead of nowhere, which is more than I can say for obsessive scrolling on Instagram and, and obsessive browsing of online shops. And that's where I'm at. My behavior has not been the best, but has not been the worst. And it's been a far cry from what I was doing at the end of June and what I was slipping into doing even more and what I would have done in July if I hadn't gone on a no-buy. As I sit here filming, I, I actually would go so far as to say that I think that a little bit of a turning point is around the corner. I, I feel like up until this point, and even to the point where I wrote the notes that I'm using for this video, which was like a day or two ago, I was feeling like the best I can do is to just read instead of shop, but I'm still reading reading in the sort of unhealthy, obsessive, escapist way that I was shopping. But it's better in a bunch of ways, and that's that. Like, that's it. I feel like even just since I wrote these notes, just in the past couple of days, I've started to sort of scent a sea change for myself, and I've started to feel like I might be more capable of actually changing the behaviors. And for me, that would mean going to sleep earlier, getting more sleep, remembering to meditate every day, doing more writing, maybe expanding my reading to some things outside of fiction and reconnecting with the part of me that does other kinds of work in the world. You know, like those kinds of things. They felt impossible just a week ago, but I think that what I have been doing, which is the not shopping and the escapist reading, has it was like the transitional period. And I actually think that I can sit before you now and say, maybe even by the time you're watching this video, I'll be even more back to myself and actually have energy to do things other than just escape. So I was planning to end this video by saying just that's where I'm at. It's just been that. But I actually think it's it's gone a step further than that with patience and time and going easy on myself and not forcing myself to do anything else than just read those novels that have been so blessedly absorptive for me. I've brought myself to the precipice of something else and I actually feel like I'm going to be able to, what do you do at a precipice? Go over it? dive, (laughs) skydive off of it. (laughs) I hope that I'll be able to skydive off of it. But I do have one more thing to say actually before I go, which is this. This time with this no buy, it took me what, eight, nine days? I mean, maybe we should say a week and a half to break the trance. But in 2018, my no-buy year, my first official no-buy, it took six months to break the trance. Six months for those habits to start to recede. Six months for me to feel like that music, that ever-present music of the allure of shopping as this big, juicy, exciting thing waiting just around the corner. Six months on a no buy before that music started to fade. For six months in 2018, I was still feeling the pull, hearing that music, wanting to shop, and just resisting, resisting, resisting. It was a hard six months, and I had to keep going. I had to get through it. I had to go that whole six months and experience finally being released from the grip of my desire to buy new things in order to start rebuilding. This time, it just took a week, and the person who came 
came flooding back to me in the second week of No by July when the trance broke. The person who kind of like woke up from that, she's somebody that I'm familiar with. She's someone I know really well because I am someone, she, uh, she slash I am someone that I've been working on becoming since my no by year. In the no by year of 2018, I hadn't built that yet. I, I was just waiting for the music to fade so that I could start building that. I went through that and then I spent three and a half years building a new way of being and working on myself thoughtfully. So she was right there just waiting to come back. I feel like this no buy was like, a, it was like a refresher in a technique that I'm very, very familiar with, but that I was just slightly out of practice with. Like I, for example, I spent 10 years in my 20s becoming a tango dancer. But now, sitting here now, I haven't really danced tango for the whole pandemic. So if I were to, say, give a tango performance right now, I would probably want to brush up on my techniques first. And I could probably get myself into pretty good dancing shape with like a couple of weeks of practice from here. But that's because in my 20s, I studied with teachers all over the world and danced tango almost every day for 10 years. If I hadn't done that, I couldn't expect myself to give a sensitive and nuanced tango performance now from zero after just two or three weeks of practice. And this is just to say, if No By July has been like a testing of the waters for you, if you feel like you need it, but you haven't really sensed a change yet, if you've just been like chewing on your fingernails waiting for the month to be over so that you can go back to the habits that you had in June, maybe consider a longer no buy, like six months to a year. If my past self, if my January 2018 self had gone back to shopping on February 1st of 2018, nothing for her would really have been different. A month wouldn't have been long enough and nothing would have changed. Right now, I feel like I could go on forever with the no buy. Like I feel like I could go easy through August, September, October. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I, there are some things on my wish list. I'm not really sure if I want any of them anymore. I'm not paying attention to it right now because I'm just enjoying reading and waiting to see what's next for me in my inner life. So I actually haven't thought about it. All I know right now, just checking in with you and checking in about it is that I don't feel urgently like I'm going to need shop, need to start shopping again on August 1st. And I wouldn't be surprised if even without rules, the no buy sort of happened to extend most of the way into August. But we'll find out together when we get there. I'll return for some sort of wrap-up check-in video sometime within the first week or two of August, and I'll let you know then. For the time being, if you're on a no-buy, let me know how it's going for you. I'm so grateful to you for watching this video, for being here with me, doing no-buy July with me if you have been doing it, and I really, really hope that you're taking extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 